Hi everyone, welcome to Urban Outdoor Adventures. We're up here on the Bay of Quinney, the Dolphus Reach, staying down in Picton, fishing for trophy, full walleye. Stay tuned, you're not gonna wanna miss it. Urban Outdoor Adventures. Teaching anglers and outdoor enthusiasts when, where, and how. This week on Urban Outdoor Adventures, Sean and Kevin Levers of Merlin Park Cottages in Picton target trophy cold water walleye. Merlin Park is situated at the west end of Picton Bay on the Bay of Quinte. Located on the northeastern end of Lake Ontario, the Bay of Quinte is a vast and impressive fishery that offers anglers a shot at landing that trophy of a lifetime. The town of Picton is conveniently located only two hours from the city of Toronto and a mere 40 minutes from Kingston, Ontario. Picton area offers many attractions and sightseeing destinations, from the breathtaking Sandbanks area to the historic town of Picton itself. The Bay of Quinty is considered to be a fish factory, offering anglers of all ages an unprecedented opportunity to boat good numbers of larger than average walleye. From their base at Merlin Park in Picton, the boys will head east up the bay to Adolphus Reach. A good starting point is just east of the ferries near the lighthouse located on the north side of the channel. This is a world-renowned area for catching trophy fish in the fall and winter months, when walleye in the tens of thousands migrate through the deep channel. Remember, once your vessel is east of the ferry docks, this portion of the bay is considered to be the open waters of Lake Ontario, allowing individuals to fish two rods per angler. When heading out on the water at this time of year, please exercise extreme caution. A survival suit is a must. This week's target species are walleye. Other popular sport fish species available are freshwater drum, carp, catfish, trout, musky, pike, salmon, small and largemouth bass, and panfish. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. It's amazing. I can't get over the size of the fish that you get down here like the walleye, you know. The time I come down here, you know, all over the summer we're fishing the coathas and catching two, three pounders, you know. It's a phenomenal fishery. Yeah, it sure is. Quinny walleye, there we go. Oh, let's just see what the sucker weighs. Yeah. Uh, he's only a uh, five and a half. Or five and a half. So he's actually pretty small fish for Gotta this love time that of net, year. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Weigh him right in the net. Oh, well, he's pretty lively. That's yeah. good. They got good. lots of energy at that size. I'm just gonna put him right off the back here. If he comes up, we'll just go back and scoop him in and put oh, the boat in okay. neutral. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a bullet. <laughs> wow. Well, these lines. Let's go. All right. We gotta get the bigger ones. You gotta get these lines back out. I <laughs> just let her out. You didn't even get it down there. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. I've got. I haven't even got the planer board yet. I'll just stick it in the holder here for now. Yeah, we don't. We only need probably one rod out there at the back. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> we could probably get away with uh, flat lines only today, right? I'm going to clear these. This is going to get crazy otherwise. Yeah, I think what we we'll, we'll do while the fish are on like this, like I said, we'll run two rods. It's just getting a little bit hectic trying to clear all these lines every the time we get a fish on. Oh, <laughs> oh they fight good too. Yeah. I think those short leaders are, puts a little less stress on the fish, right, having to bring them in so far. We started shortening up our leaders so we don't have to fight the fish so far to the boat. We started putting it in neutral just to give the fish a little bit more chance to get to us quickly as opposed yeah. to being way back out there and getting all out of breath. Well, this braided line is nice because you can feel every little head shake. Yeah. Oh my god, you won't come up. Come on, you little bugger. Oh, you dogging? Just a little seven pounder. Little seven pounder. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, he's just a little tan. Little tan. <laughs> oh, there man. we go. 
Look at that. <laughs> Look at that wallet. I'm going to get a quick bite on this one too. Oh, it's just a, it's a baby seven and a half. Oh, it's just a baby. <laughs> Let him go. The reports I heard of how good the fishing was here in the last few days, I was a bit worried that we might have missed the window, but uh, I don't oh, think no. that's the case, mate. Oh, no, they're just starting. They're just starting to come in. Look at that. Look at that beautiful walleye. Bear Quinny. Nice so, dark colors and gold on the bottom. They're yeah. so healthy. That's beautiful. I'm going to get a back. Yeah. Go off the back here. Yeah. Let's give them a second or two to revive themselves. Look at that. Oh, yeah. oh man, I'm enjoying myself now. <laughs> and he just put that out, Kevin, eh? <laughs> That's on the uh, flat line, and I didn't let it on the line out. We actually, I'll be honest with you here, we got the camera boat going back for the planer board on the last fish we got. <laughs> and uh, I just dropped this down, let it out a little way, and it went off. We're using uh, actually eight foot six steelhead rods for our flat lines just to get a bit of a fight out of the fish, running short lines just in case we pick one up, and sure enough, we did. Is he fighting okay? Yeah, he feels like uh, a little heavy. Bit of weight there. I'm gonna pop the boat into neutral and uh, let Kevin net this fish for us. It's a lot different to uh, casting for them, eh? Yeah. I mean, we're using light tackle like this when we're casting, but your fights may be you know, 20 yards at the most. But when they're way back there like that, it really puts a strain on your equipment. So. Oh, that's a nice one, buddy. Yeah. So my advice is, if you think they're going too heavy, you're probably oh, not. Oh, oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. He's got some life to him. They're Quinny Walleye. Yep. On the diving crank, <laughs> <laughs> Good like job, that. You just gotta really be careful of those gill rakers on the inside of the gills. Yeah. We don't, don't want to do that, any damage. We really don't want to damage any of these fish because we're practicing catch and release today. Perfect. And, uh, there we go. We'll get that out of the net in a minute. You can give me the net if you like. Yeah. But it sure is fun catching them off those like, yeah. rods, eh? Let's, Let's get him off rods. the back here. Okay. See if he takes off. There he goes. Come on. Beautiful. Straight, Straight down. down. Look at that. You don't really want to fish from below 30 feet because then. The, the bladders and stuff will blow up in that. Right. But we were fishing around the 20 foot mark. Yeah. And then to, to sort of torpedo them down, they'll get down to that 10 foot depth and it just eases their body like yeah. get back to that regular. They depth adjust depth. themselves. They adjust yeah. themselves. Yeah. I'm here with Troy Copeland. We've just installed a four blade performance stainless steel prop on here. Why don't we go through some of the benefits of stainless over aluminum props? Well, the stainless propeller is five times stronger than aluminum props. You can cast these thinner so they can cut through the water nicer. The aluminum blades will flex under a high horsepower load where the stainless steel, it will not. It's 21 inch pitch, it stays there. Cost factor, Cost more expensive. More expensive. Less yes. expensive. Correct. Both have great applications. Yep. Uh, most engines come standard with the aluminum props. Yes. If you want to get a little more performance, you might want to go to the stainless, right? A little yes. more bow lift, a little more speed. I think we got one here, Sean. We got, <laughs> you got another one on there? Yeah. Perfect. We just got the plane of all back from the camera boat <laughs> from the other fish. Oh, just yeah. landed one on the flat line. And now you got one on this one. That planing ball popped right off, eh? It That's did. what looks like a better fish. I'm just going to turn this a little bit here, Kevin. Oh, this feels good. It's staying down. This time of the year, if you go in the water, you want to make sure that you have these uh, survival suits here. It's 55 degrees here. If you go in, you're going to float and uh, get rescued safely. Yeah, how come I didn't get one of those new suits like, like the cameraman's? <laughs> I got one of the old ones. <laughs> Stevie's wearing the new suit. <laughs> you want his suit? No, they look pretty nice. Can you have your suit, Steve? <laughs> I don't think he's gonna give it up, mate. Look okay, at I'm wearing I'm wearing a hole in mine from where my rod usually That's sits. That's right, yeah, the, <laughs> the fighting hole. How's oh. it feel, man? Oh, it feels heavy, buddy. It feels heavy. This is definitely a nice fish. I like to bring them up nice and slow. Yeah. The pressure change comes up nice and slow. Yeah. If you just bring them up from that 20 foot right up to the top, it hurts them a little more, I think. When you're bringing fish, uh, primarily walleye anyway, and even lake trout out of deep water. The swim bladder will actually swell up and come right out of the yeah. throat, right? Well, lake trout have, they have a release valve, yeah. sort of, but while they don't have that. 
Right, so it's really so the best thing to do is to release that fish right away, take a quick picture and release it right down, right yeah. away. And see if it'll uh, help itself. Keep us oh man, this here. thing is, this thing is staying down. The pig? Yeah, it feels <laughs> heavy. <laughs> We're out of uh, Adolphus Reach right here, right? Yeah. <laughs> you won't get them one out there? <laughs> We're out of Adolphus Reach, we're just staying down at Kevin's Place in Picton. And uh, we've run down here just east of the ferry. Now out in this water here, it's actually classified as the open water of Lake Ontario, right? Yeah. So you can actually run two rods per man. That's right. Other yeah. side of the ferry, you're limited to one rod one per rod man, per, right? per angler, I should say. Not per man, per angler. It's starting to get a little closer. Is it? I'll get, get that, that net, net ready. ready. I'm going to put it in neutral, Kevin. Yeah, that'd be better. Make it a little easier for you. We've only got the one line out. Let's see, let me clear that rod real quick. I'm gonna just step to your left. Okay. I'm gonna do it. It feels like it's a pretty good fish, so we're gonna clear all these excess lines out of the way. Oh, there he goes. He's head shaking now. Oh, yeah. Oh, there he goes. I, I, I saw oh. a little glimpse there. Stay on there. There we oh, go. Oh funny. yeah. Beauty, mate. Beauty. Oh. There we go. Oh, Look at that. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's probably a good ten and a half. Yeah, more that's wood. a good fish. What's it weigh? Let's get a weight on that right now. Quick weight. Yeah, he's, oh, 11, 11 pounds even. 11 pounds. Right on the scale here. Well, that is what we're looking for down here. I'll tell you what, there's not too many places in Ontario where you can go and catch, you know, 10, 11, 12 pound walleye on a regular basis. You've got to get down here and give the big Quinny a try for walleye in the fall. Look at that. Took the finish right off that new bait. <laughs> right out of the box that was. Well, look at the teeth on them. That'll do it. Yeah. Let me get that out of there. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. I like to try to suspend their bodies because they don't yeah. don't really want to hang you know on them. Can you give me one second? I want to get the camera. I want to get a quick picture of that fish, sure. okay? Sure. CPR. Brought to you by Nikon Digital Cameras. Got this little digital here. It allows me to just flip it open, basically. You hold that up, Kevin. Get a shot. That's a beautiful fish, mate. Smile, mate. All right. You're supposed to look happy. <laughs> Good one. Beautiful fish. One more. Great. Let's get her back in the water. It's nice to just suspend their body a little bit. Just yeah, you don't want to belly. Any fish really, you don't want to be doing vertical holds. Make sure you always support the body weight. Yeah, right, These fish right. are suspended in water all their life, right? They're not used to being hung up by the That's gill. Right. So let's get her back there, Kevin. Okay. What's that line there, right? Yep. Back in here. Oh, look at the size of that thing. Oh, he took right off. Straight down. All right. 11 pounders. <laughs> Straight down to the bottom. Let's get these rods back out, man. Kevin's 11 pound walleye hit a deep diving crankbait on the edge of a deep channel. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. In the center of the channel, the water depth was 120 feet. Sean and Kevin made passes through depths between 100 feet and 80 feet. They marked huge numbers of what appeared to be walleye on their graph. After hooking several fish, it became apparent that walleye were in the area. By using their GPS sonar, they were able to repeatedly troll back and forth through productive areas along the tapering south side of the channel, targeting fish that were between 20 and 30 feet down. Fish and bait were marked anywhere from 20 to 110 feet down throughout the channel. The strike zone was a band of water between 20 and 30 feet below the surface. This was located on the edge of the first main drop-off. The boys chose not to target the deeper fish as walleye taken out of depths over 30 feet are unlikely to survive. In late fall, early winter, huge schools of walleye migrate through the Bay of Quinte. Please practice catch and release with the larger fish. These breeders are key to the survival of the fishery. Productive baits were deep-tailed dancers, fished on flat lines or behind small planer boards. Trolling speeds were 1.9 to 2.4 miles per hour. Try running titanium braided line leaders in conjunction with your monofilament line to assist in getting your lures down to their maximum running depths. When fishing cold water eyes, don't be surprised if you hook into one of the numerous scrappy sheep's head in the area. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website.
people are always emailing me and saying, how do I frame a picture correctly? And I got to be honest with you, Greg. I mean, you know, I'm the point and shoot guy, right? I really don't know. So maybe you can help us understand that a little better. Okay, well, Photography 101 is uh, the rule of thirds. And what the rule of thirds is, if you think of drawing like a tic-tac-toe board, and what you want to do is you want to position your subjects in the areas where the lines are intersecting so that you're getting a natural flow across the, the whole picture, across the whole image, rather than something being right smack in, in the center of the picture. In our cameras, uh, we have a handy little tool that would help somebody just like you, Sean. It's a, it's a framing grid, and it will bring up that, that third so you can see yeah. that in the camera as you're taking the picture. So, for example, if you're taking a picture of your, your trophy catch, if I'm holding the fish right here, there'd be, as Steve will show you, way too much space above my head if I'm, if I'm just focused in on me. Or likewise, if I'm holding the, the fish and, and that's the center, then there's too much down here. What you want to do is you want to put the person in that rule of thirds, so their head would be in the top portion of the picture, the fish is going to be in the lower portion, crossing those, those lines, and you create a more interesting photo. Yeah, there's a fish on here there for is. sure. Yeah. All right. Shall I uh, neutral it, you think? Yeah. Because I can reel this one in. The reason we're doing that, putting the boat into neutral, is that Kevin brought up a great point earlier that you don't want to be dragging these fish and, and stressing them unnecessarily, right? Plus, you can have a lot more fun fighting the fish when you're in neutral. That's you can right. always reset your lines and put everything back out. I'm going to try and keep this planer board on so we don't have to go back for it again. I'll just try to get this line out of the way. Yeah, I think it's right there now. I've got quite a bit to go yet. Once I get that board in, i still got about uh, 100 feet of line out there behind the board, so... Yeah, there's a fish. There's a fish there? Yeah. Okay, this one's out of the way. Can you grab that board for me, Kev? Yep. These boards are great. They just clip right on the line and... Uh, Clip right off. I was thinking that bringing these big downrigger rods down here with me was going to be a bit of overkill, but it's certainly no, not. No, those, eh? those are perfect. Those yeah. are perfect. Especially for netting them, because you could swing that big long rod right into the net. Yeah. And a good thing to point out to the viewers is if you go out in Lake Ontario fishing for salmon, bring your salmon gear down here. It works <laughs> just as well. We're playing these fish slowly once they get close like this, right? We don't want to. Uh, if, if the swim bladder has expanded a little bit, you want to take your time with them, and just ease them towards the boat. And I can't stress enough, guys, it's so important that these big fish go back, right? Oh, yeah. I Definitely. mean, keep the four or five pounders, you know, I mean... <laughs> yeah, three fours. Three or fours, I should say, yeah. I mean, here, it seems that a four or five is a small one, but keep those three or four pounders and uh, good to eat. Oh, yeah. It's imperative and we let the big ones we've go. We've got to let the big stop. breeders go. There he is. Oh, he's pulling. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. There, nice one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, look at him going. Oh, no. no. Kev, oh, what are you doing to me, man? He was too big for the net. <laughs> <laughs> he laid right across the table. You know of the net. We were going to let it go anyway, so I'm not too worried. I got to see it. But I think he did that on purpose. I don't know about you. But. Well, okay. <laughs> <Yeah. release. laughs> big fish breed big fish, so it's just imperative to let that uh, educate the anglers to just try to take care of these fish and just let them go and, and keep a couple little ones for the plate. Yeah. Three fours. <laughs> Those aren't little. Keep the three or four pounders for the table and let the uh, anything bigger, especially those 12 pounders, let them go. Maybe imperative. a little more delicate release than that yeah, one. Yeah, nice but. net job, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> All right, the fishing action has been absolutely incredible out here today. So I'm going to do the tackle review right here in the boat on the water. Secret to our success, deep diving crankbaits. This particular model here, we've been running in about four or five different colors and all have been working extremely well. This bait will run down to about 30 feet with the braided line that we're using as leaders. For the flat lines, I've been running an eight foot six medium action steelhead rod here with a good quality bait casting reel that will hold a good quantity of line. Sport with 20 pound test again and 30 pound braid as a leader. For the planer boards, you've got a little more resistance and you're gonna want a rod with some backbone. I've got a 10 foot down rigging rod here with a big reel for a lot of line to go off to the side. You've got 20 pound test mono and again a 30 pound test leader to get those baits down deep. As far as planer boards go, just got these 
lightweight plastic boards here. They're perfectly adequate for the walleye fishing out here. Line clips right in. They'll pop off if you get a big fish on. You can locate them with the flag there. We're using a double rod holder set up here. Send your planer boards out first and then put your flat lines down after. Give these techniques a try. I guarantee you're going to have some great success. Oh, it's a walleye. It's a good it's, walleye. It's a big Walter. <laughs> it's quite the fishery, man. Are you pulling line on you? I know. Oh, my God. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Hardly go in the net. Look at the size of that. <laughs> Holy cow, Kevin. <laughs> look at the size That's of that. That's the biggest it. one in it. <laughs> on the light rod, too. Flat line. We're actually using planer boards today and flat lines. And the fish are definitely feeding actively because we've had fish both close to the boat and away from the boat. When the fishing slows down a little bit, you might want to focus more on those planer boards to get your lures out away from the boat so you don't get the, the noise disturbing them. Look at that. That is a beauty. Look at that fish. All right. Try not to, I don't really want to handle them too much. But... Well, I tell you what, Kevin. <laughs> what a way to end the day, man. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. You've got to get down here. We're actually staying at Kevin's place down in Picton, but we're fishing Adolphus Reach here. All through this Bay of Quinney right here in the fall, it's just fantastic walleye fishing, trophy walleye fishing yeah. at its finest. Thanks for watching. I'm Sean Rickard. We'll see you next week for yet another urban outdoor adventure. Mm. Let's get it back in the water. <laughs> Look at the size of this Perfect. sucker. Well, I must be reeling in your line then. Right? Because I definitely have a fish on here. Oh, you do? So maybe yeah. it's on that one then. It's on here. Well, we don't know which rod it's on, but we've got a fish on here, so... <laughs>